So I've put together a bag of clubs which I think are going to suit a lot of different golfers, but especially those new to the game or looking for lots of forgiveness. But what should you be putting in your bag and how much is it going to cost? Everything in this video is based on buying clubs new, but we are going to also be including cheaper alternatives. So first up, the bag. I'm a big believer in walking the golf course whenever possible. I know sometimes it isn't, but having a pencil bag or a really light stand bag just enables you to grab it out of the car and get onto the course really quickly. So this is a bag I got through from Tacoma, and I don't think it will tend too well in a muddy Manchester, but we're here at Glen Eagles, and this setting, it just, it just looks absolutely amazing. Having a bag like this, it just gives you a bit more of a connection to the golf course that you don't get if you are in a buggy or if you're even pushing a trolley. There are obviously sacrifices to be made with a bag like this. It's uh, not overly rigid and the pockets, well, I've only got two of them. If it was raining, I might be struggling for waterproofs, but I mean, people are waterproof anyway. But there are other options available if you're thinking of getting a lightweight stand bag, for example, or if you are looking to get in a pencil bag, there's loads of different options there. If you're not playing regularly and you are likely to be losing golf balls, here's a perfect example of what you could get. So these are the Titleist Tour Soft and they're sneakily a really, really good ball, but there's a lot of different options within this mid price range category. But here's where you need to be honest with yourself. This ball is likely to slice just as much as a new Pro V1 would into the trees. And if you're not striking the ball consistently, you don't have that perfect distance control. Is using a cheaper ball actually gonna make that much difference? No, it's not gonna make or break your score, and it definitely won't break your heart or bank balance. So on to the clubs, but stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna be putting this set in the hands of an average golfer to show hopefully how successful they can be. It's gonna be a really cool challenge that, so stay tuned. So for the wedges, I'm throwing in a slight curveball early on. Oh, but that's why I do it, do it. So these are Voki SM9s and they sit towards the top end of the wedge market. But having the workability around the greens is just absolutely invaluable. And these feel, look, sound just so good. If you're only playing a few times a month, that means you may not practice as much as you'd like. Therefore, to make a score, your short game should be absolutely killer. These wedges are a classic shape and I've decided to go for the 54 degree and the 60. The 50 will make a nice gap between my irons and the 60 will be used a lot for shots around the green. Now they are not cheap, but like I said, there are some other options, but the versatility that these wedges give me around the green and will give pretty much every golfer around the green as well is I think a worthwhile investment. For the putter, all we really need is something big, forgiving, and easy to line up. And I could have put a lot of clubs into this category. Now the putter that I've got in the bag is the Odyssey 11 Tour line, but as mentioned, there could have been a lot of different putters which I put into this video. Really simply, you can see on this putter, there's a weight in the heel, there's a weight in the toe, and there is a big weight at the back as well. And this is just pushing the moment of inertia even higher. The forgiveness in this putter is really, really high. The alignment aid on top as well is very clear. It's just one big single line. And I really like this little slant neck design. But as mentioned, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of putters which you can choose from. Here's a very quick selection. As mentioned, if you aren't a regular golfer and you are just looking for forgiveness, the bigger, the better. So I've selected to go into this bag, a hybrid. Now the hybrids are good for that exact reason. I almost topped it, but it's still gone about 220 yards. Now the club I've selected here is a 19 degree stealth hybrid. I like the stealth hybrid. It looks nice behind the ball. It flies really high and it's very, very forgiving. The magic in this design is very simply about the shape. It's a marrying of a fairway wood and an iron. A lot of people, when they put a fairway wood behind the ball, get nervous and it's understandable. It's a bigger club. People sometimes don't like hitting fairway woods, but a hybrid is a fantastic blend of the two. 
to be honest, there are a lot of golfers out there. I'd actually recommend putting hybrids in all the way down to, oh, you can almost stick it in all the way down to a six iron. Now, like I said, I really like this stealth hybrid. I think it marries together a lot of really good things about this type of design, but every manufacturer has a hybrid to sell. Some really well-known ones, but also some more gorilla type of manufacturers do excel in this area. I'll be really interested to see how good this club is in the hands of the regular golfer that is gonna be taking me on. And also get down into those comments below. Let us know the makeup of your bag and where you think you need to strengthen. I would love to know your thoughts. And by the way, guys, I have some clubs to give away. Wall up that like button as soon as this video gets past 7.8 thousand likes, that giveaway will be activated. And on to the big stick and this is a club which i absolutely love so this is the callaway rogue st max ls and i've done a review on this driver already if you want to check it out here but this is a perfect marriage for me of distance and forgiveness the rogue st max and the g425 max those two drivers i think are the most forgiving that you can get in golf this is the Rogue ST Max LS, and it just gives a little bit more oomph. But either one of those Rogue ST drivers will be absolutely fine, and the ping is obviously incredibly forgiving. And these are some of the other options that you should look at. But I think of all the clubs that I've tested this year, the Rogue ST series really exceeded my expectations. Oh, it just sounds so good as well. One of the best things about this driver when I was testing it is ball speed across the face is really good. So you strike from the heel, you strike it from the toe, you're still going to get some distance and the ball is still going to go up in the air. Now, if you are going to spend the money on a new driver, I would always recommend trying to get fit. No matter the level of golfer that you are, it will be a good idea. But some quick tips, you're going to want forgiveness. So let's crank up that loft even further. Try and get a driver where there's a lot of weight at the back. Again, this is going to increase the MOI. Now, lastly, let's get onto the irons. I've picked a fantastic set to go in this bag and it rounds everything off really well, but it's actually a slightly strange choice as well. So the irons I've selected are the Ping G425. These are probably one of the best all round irons in the game that you can get. They're forgiving, they perform really good, they feel nice, but I've not gone for a classic full set and I'll explain why. So in this bag, I've put a four iron, a six iron, an eight iron and a wedge. Now, <laughs> I have given enough lessons to enough golfers over the years to actually realize that a lot of people don't need a full set you can get away with a half set and still play some really good golf. And if you don't believe me, I mean, have an experiment. If you've got some clubs already, literally take half of them out, go around your golf course and see if your score improves or not. By the way, these feel fantastic. Now there are some other options as well. If you're going for something super, super forgiving, I would suggest potentially a half iron and hybrid set. There are others as well, and there are so many different price points that you can come in at here. As a golfer, I think this is a fantastic time to be looking for clubs. There are so many amazing deals available secondhand as well. You know, we're talking about Ping irons. Going back to maybe the Ping G iron, that is still a fantastic golf club and will do many of the things that the G425 will do as well. And that's almost what? Eight years old. I'll let Jacob tell me if I was right or wrong. <laughs> right. Let's go put these clubs in the hands of our regular golfer and explain exactly what we're going to be doing. So here is what is going to be happening. I'm going to give these clubs to Jacob and we're going to be seeing how successful he is with them against me 
when I use a set of hickory clubs. And we're going to be playing down here on the Queen's course at Glen Eagles. It's going to be an epic matchup. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you walk that like button, activate that giveaway, and be a subscriber to the channel. Right, good luck. Play Thank well. You. Guys, hopefully this helps you as well if you are going to get a new set of clubs or you are looking to upgrade your bag. Let us know what you think in the comments.